and we are now using and applying that experience to achieve our goals and objectives with renowned passion and enthusiasm. That's not to say that the kingdom's abundant natural resources and resultant competitive advantages don't play their part in the story. They do, and they will be significant, but largely as part of a process around which different circumstances and opportunities open alternative new avenues for prosperity. What circumstances and opportunities, you might ask? In December 2005, Saudi Arabia became a member of the WTO and is now far more open to and active in attracting international investment, knowledge, and partnerships. Globalization has created opportunities for more companies to search for new and exciting markets to enhance their profitability and competitiveness. Hence, we see an increasing number of Saudi projects becoming the focal point in a new web of alliances made up of high-quality international partners. This makes it easier for our projects to grow as self-sustaining entities based on sound economic, financial, and commercial conditions financed through domestic and international partnerships rather than funded and supported by the government. Let me use one of our current growth sectors as an example of such alliances, not only because I am thoroughly familiar with it, but also because it's highly demonstrative of the principles of the, of the sustainable approach to diversification at the heart of our theme. And talking about the development of the mining sector in Saudi Arabia. The simplest and fastest way of using the kingdom's reserves of valuable minerals, such as bauxite and phosphates, would probably be to export them. It's fast, and there is good cash in the bank. But what next? The answer is to use these reserves to make each opportunity count to the maximum in the developmental terms. Therefore, we have decided, rather than shipping our raw materials overseas, we will process them in Saudi Arabia. As a result, instead of employing just a few hundred people in a mine, we will employ several thousand people in turning our bauxite into alumina and aluminum and our phosphate into fertilizers, thus creating the platform for growth of the associated downstream industries and services. In the process, we will also create the web of alliances at home and abroad, allowing us to share the expertise and the technology and immense generation of young Saudis in the spectrum of skills and knowledge at the heart of the new industrial sector. By the way, the map that you have over here is just for the two mega projects that Ma'adin is building today, which will be completed in 2010, and the railroad that connects them to the eastern part of Saudi Arabia. Our phosphate bauxite mega projects are just two examples of how the kingdom is using its huge non-oil natural resources to breathe life into new sectors supplying fundamental products to new domestic industries and export markets. And what's more, these investments will not be in the traditional business hubs that are presently receiving the bulk of the investments in Saudi Arabia, but places like Arar, uh, Hafr al-Batin, and Ras al-Zur. These are names that you may not, some, some of you may not be familiar with. These will be the heroes of our new industrial revolution. They will be called upon to supply the skilled workforce and support services needed to sustain operations and it is there that colleges and hospitals will develop to meet new demands to the shared benefit of the local communities. Best of all, there are no shortage of new opportunities in mining and mineral industries in Saudi Arabia. Geologically speaking, with the Arabian Shield, similar in size 
and constitution to the Canadian shield. In the map here you see the Arabian shield on the west side of Saudi Arabia in the color red. What the kingdom has spent on mineral exploration in the last 30 years is equivalent to what Canada normally spends in one year. This clearly demonstrates that the scope of the new opportunities in the mining and minerals industry in the kingdom, I can assure you that the surface of the country has barely been scratched. Aside from globalization, partnerships and resources, what else will enable these opportunities to play their part? That brings us to our new rail system. Historically and practically, in every country, railways have had a tremendous impact on transforming economic, economics wherever they were built. The creation of the new north-south railway system associated with the mineral resources that we are developing will provide the backbone of our new industries spreading commercial accessibility throughout the kingdom. Our new railway system will enable the shipment of millions of tons of raw material to processing facilities and bringing business and energy to the regional towns and cities it connects. We are building a brand new industrial city. Some of you may have heard about it. It's called Ras al Zor. It's north of Jubail. This is the new mineral industrial city in Saudi Arabia. The new east coast in Ras al Zor, which is north of Jubail, is another essential piece of the new infrastructure, giving industry an outlet to the nearby markets of Asia and beyond, thereby delivering another sustainable competitive advantage for Saudi industry to market access. Even before the export earnings from our phosphate and bauxite projects come into play, investment in other valuable commodities such as gold, magnesite and kaolin have already started, thus expanding the portfolio of sustainable commercial opportunities that the Saudi mining sister, sector has created. Although these projects are not directly or heavily reliant on energy, yet they fully benefit the competitive advantages that our energy resources and additional infrastructure are providing. And so, the conjunction of investment from an oil-based economy and borderless commercial relationships has created existing web of alliances upon which numerous sustainable domestic industries can be built across all the region of our country. We are determined to use our kingdom's competitive resources and strategic alliances to achieve sustainability and prosperity. Sustainability and prosperity, it is still both a strategy and an aspiration, but it is in fact also a fast becoming reality. Its attainment is at the very heart of our approach and not a bit of a tumbleweed inside. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, absolutely fascinating uh, and a, a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much indeed, Doctor. Um, questions? Uh, I see the gentleman down here in the second row. Uh, lots of hands. So can we again keep the question short and sharp? Where are my microphone friends gone? They've taken an early tea break. I cannot believe that. Are you a microphone man? You are. Could you sprint down here to the second row for me? If you would be kind enough, sir, to keep your hand up, and he will then find you. And it is going to be microphone number four. Thank you very much. Your question to the good doctor. أخوكم الفريق عبد العزيز هنيدي حقيقة كلام ممتاز جدا. سؤال بسيط جدا بالنسبة لي. الخطوط الخط الحديدي اللي من الشمال الى الشرق الى الجنوب كيف ليش ما يروح اسفل الى الجنوب وايضا الى الغرب 
ليش فقط خطوط السكة الحديد تكون بس من الشمال إلى أقصى الشرق وما هي نازلة كثير إلى الجنوب مع أن المفروض المملكة كلها ولا هذه مرحلة أولى شكرا Thank you, sir. المملكة العربية السعودية لديها خطة متكاملة لربط المملكة جميع جهاتها بالسفك الحديدية كل ما هنالك عندما بدأنا تطوير مشروعي الفوسفات والبوكسايت كنا على عجل لإنشاء سكة حديد الشمال الجنوب حتى تستطيع أن تخدم هذه المشروعين في الواقع الخطة موجودة لدى المملكة العربية السعودية ولكن الأولوية أعطيت للشمال الجنوب لخدمة هذه المشروعين وأعتقد أن المؤسسة العامة للسكك الحديدية هي المسؤولة عن بقية القطاعات وأعتقد أنها عازمة على العمل في هذا المجال Is there a time scale of ambition that would see a broader network? Time scale for, for our railroad? For, for, for heading further? Because we, we also on the map it was that top right hand corner but that's right well the, maybe five or ten the, years because you showed in the shelf yeah no the, the other the, bit the 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 the, the north south railroad which will serve the minerals comes from our border with jordan all the way down to the center and goes to the east that will be completed in june 2010 and along with it our projects will be completed to start production the rest of the railroad is coming into different phases yeah. And it is done by a separate organization, the uh, Railroad Authority. Thank you very much indeed. Maybe next year we can have a discussion on the transportation dimension, because we had a very useful discussion last year about the airline industry. So maybe land-based transport as well. But thank you very much for your question. Microphone three. Assalamu uh, This is uh, Dr. Khalid Maimani from KAU. Uh, as you know, most nations care about the added value, uh, as you said, not just to extract the minerals, but to mix it, for instance, like in the case of uh, phosphate, with other chemicals uh, or derivatives of the downstream uh, oil industry. Do you have that in mind, or you just are extracting and exporting? Thank you. Uh, as I pointed out, the Ma'adin is not exporting any raw phosphate rock or even beneficiated rock. We are taking the, the rock, four and a half million tons of that rock, transporting it to the eastern province where we have our industrial zone. We are making the largest phosphoric acid plant in the world, the largest sulfuric acid plant in the world, the largest diammonium plant in the world and producing three million tons of diammonium phosphates. So we are going as much as possible in the uh, chain for the fertilizers and we are producing uh, all for exports, a product that's desired the world over. So we are making opportunities of all the materials that we have, with the energy that we have, and, uh, uh, as much as possible and makes commercial uh, reason. And not necessarily your business, but I understand I had dinner with a, uh, a young Saudi man and a group of people last night, uh, and he is in construction and was concerned about shortages of steel and copper and was telling me that raw materials are also imported to Saudi and there is Saudi Arabian steel mills and 